We're now in Module 6 about functions. We're going to talk about understanding relationships in 6.1a. So take a look at this machine I drew. Anything put in will be multiplied by 5. That's the rule. We have an input and an output. We can think of input and output as what we put into a rule machine and what will come out of the machine. If I put in a 2, the rule is multiplied by 5. The output will be a 10. Now take a look at this table. We can complete a table by applying a rule to the input and output. We look what's happening with the input. It's going up by 1. It's going 2, 3, 4. So each one is going up by 1. And on this side, it's going up by 4. So as it goes up by 1, it goes up by 4. The rule must be times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. We know the rule is to multiply by 4. Now here we have an unfinished table. Tala needs to buy some pens from the school supply shop. She asks some classmates if they know how much the pens cost. Sam says he bought three pens for six dollars. And Sarah says she bought four pens for eight dollars. And Bill said he bought five pens for ten dollars. Tala thinks of the rule for the price of a pen as a machine. Putting the number of pens she wants into the machine, a rule is applied that will tell her the total cost for that number of pens. We see as the number of pens goes up by 1, the total cost goes up by 2. The rule must be to multiply by 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 2 is 10. Here, now we have an X. We have an unknown number of pens. We know that if we multiply it by 2, we will have 2x. We can multiply any number x by that 2, and we will have the total cost. If we have 10 pens and we multiply it by 2, we're going to have a total cost of 20. When the number of pens increases by 1, the total cost increases by $2. The rule is to multiply by $2. We have our input, our rule, and our output. The input is the number of pens, and the output is the total cost. We're putting it into our machine, and the rule is to multiply it by $2. Since the machine gives a single price for each number of pens by using multiplication, we could run the machine backwards by using division. Division and multiplication are inverse operations. We could do 6 divided by 2 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. And we could do x divided by 2. Using the rule $2, we can write the algebraic expression of $2x to find the total cost for any number of pens. If Tala wants to buy 7 pens, we substitute 7 for x in the rule. We have $2x, we do $2 times 7, that's $14 total cost. Each number of pens will be a multiple of 2, of $2. Okay, let's try this one. Tala decides to buy markers in a package. There are eight markers in two packages. There are eight markers in two packages. Eight divided by two tells us there's four markers per package. We can write a rule in words for the number of packages Tala needs to buy X markers, some unknown number X. The rule would be divide the number of markers by four. That would tell us how many packages. We can write this rule as an algebraic expression. Some number x of markers divided by 4 would tell us the number of packages. So we can substitute any number of markers for x to know the total number of packages needed. If Tala needs 12 markers, she would do 12 divided by 4, 
and that would be equal to three packages that she'd need to buy. The rule here is plus three. This is all plus three. If the input is two, we have plus three. Our output is five. If the input is three, our output is six. If it's four, the output's seven. And five, the output's eight. And six, the output's nine. If we run the machine backwards, the rule is minus three. We'd have five minus three would be two. And six minus three would be three, and so on. We're finished with 6.1a. We're going to move on to b, identifying functions from mapping diagrams. I hope you understand input and output now and you found it easy. And I hope you join me for the next lesson and have a great day. Bye.